Hey guys, this is a nice find. There's this really large, looks like in the family Aishnidae, this dragonfly. And it was flying around me a couple seconds and then it just landed here. And you can see it's got a prey item. Looks like a Katie did that I had caught. You see it just munching away. It's a pretty large sized Aishnid. And the Aishnids are large bodied dragonflies. They're of the larger of the families. See them just munching away. Somewhat surprised it's letting me get this close, but it was probably a little tired of carrying this large meal item in flight. I probably just wanted to perch and start feeding. Maybe it's just very hungry. The Aishnids are also, they're very beautiful dragonflies. You have this really vibrant emerald green on the thorax as well as the uh, the head and the eyes. You see the eyes in particular, the compound eyes of Aishnids are enormous. They wrap almost around the entire head. And so you can see how their visual acuity is just remarkable. Let's see if we can side view here. You see those mouth parts at work there. Got a good meal. I went to wing. Very beautiful dragonflies. And of course the immature stages of odonates, they're aquatic and highly predatory as well, particularly the, the dragonflies. And what's interesting about the immature dragonflies is that they have this labial mask. So they have a labium that uh, will project out from the head. It will be kind of covering up the head like this, sort of like an arm. Um, the labium actually being a modified appendage, uh, just like the other mouth parts. So the labium will sort of be, co be covering the, the oral region and the immature. And when there's a prey item, it, it shoots out, okay? And then pulls in its prey item. And so these aquatic uh, immature dragonfly stages are really quite impressive. Uh, and this, this happens extremely quickly. it here is making pretty quick strides in finishing its meal. Kind of imagine that they have to eat somewhat quickly because they can be disturbed uh, sometimes by other dragonflies that try to steal their meals or maybe other insects, other predatory insects. A very beautiful dragonfly. Again it's kind of rare that you can get up extremely close to these dragonflies because they're really usually focused on any movement. Here I think it's just so busy 
eating its meal that uh, it's not really paying attention. Or maybe it's, it just likes being videotaped. Very photogenic individual. It's just about done there. Finishing the leg. I need to give you a size comparison. Let's see how close I can get here. My finger. Yeah. It's pretty large. Individual. All right, so I think that's probably a good way to wrap things up. Sort of reach the edge of the woods here. In this nice uh, countryside area. And you can see the beautiful view, the sun setting, and the mountains in the background. We're pretty close to the western mountain range here. western side of the Kanto region. Now perhaps try to do a night collecting uh, video at some point because a lot of different insects will emerge at night. Um, particularly if you set up a, a light sheet that attracts in, in areas like this, you just get hundreds and hundreds of, of all sorts of, of taxa. And you know, for, for those of you who are not you know, in a rural region, or maybe you're in the middle of a city, you can still find lots of insects in those habitats as well. You just have to look. Now, that's not to say that insects are diverse in urban habitats, they're not. Um, you know, you really want natural habitats, uh, wild habitats. That's where the diversity is highest. Uh, but you can find insects almost anywhere, really. That's the great thing about them. It's just that in urban areas, you might have a lot of, you might have many uh, individual insects. Uh, but it won't be a high diversity, so you won't find a lot of different types of insects. You might find a lot of, um, you know, city-adapted insects like uh, various cockroach groups, um, various types of flies that like you know, city areas, um, stuff like that. So it's certainly important to preserve wild habitats, right? It's not just in terms of preserving the numbers of, of organisms, it's the diversity that's important. Okay. And in particular regards to insects, that diversity is still you know, largely unknown. Uh, we still have so many to, to discover. So, thanks for watching again, and uh, you know, See you next time on Insectamundi. Just sort of end this beautiful sunset here.